Well, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, since the last time we played with dot graphics and we were trying to work out whether or not there was a problem with dots being translated into grayscale, um, I've been doing a little bit of further work on wood, trying to get pictures onto wood, and that has thrown up quite a few interesting questions. So. So I've decided to look into this a little bit deeper to see if I can work out what's going on really. Now since that last session I've had several people suggest that it might be a problem with the power supply response time itself and that's a distinct possibility. So what I'm going to try and do is break it down into smaller elements to see if we can possibly understand where the problem is originating from. And in doing this work we may find some of the best parameters to use for engraving. OK, well here we are in Photoshop and I've set up a screen which basically allows me to draw at a resolution of 100 pixels per inch, quite a low resolution. And what I've got, I've got a brush up here which is set at one pixel size. So when I draw on here, so I can draw a single pixel on here and then what I'm going to do is to leave and I'm going to draw here so that I can take it out easily. One, two, three, four pixels. Okay, I've just completed a pattern there where I've basically got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pixels. And each one is separated by four pixels, which are this bottom line. So we don't need that bottom line now. I'm now going to copy that. Even though I'm using black and white, this whole picture has been set up as a grayscale image and that's so that I can choose a different color. Now at the moment we've chosen we've got black which is 000 RGB. I want to go for a mid gray which is halfway up the 255 scale and that's 128 128 one, two, eight, and that gives me a mid grey, which I'm now going to pour into. So I'm going to make each one of these mid grey. Now, mid grey is halfway between black and white. So where is the top line? I'm expecting it to see one pixel, two pixels, three pixels, four pixels, etc. The second line down, I'm expecting when I dither this picture for mm, some confusion to occur, but basically every other pixel. So obviously there can't be every other pixel on number one, but there could be one pixel on number two, mm, one or two on number three, two on number four, you, you, you'll understand what I mean. There's a certain amount of uncertainty as to how the calculation is going to go when you know the computer decides to work out how many blacks it's going to put in to represent this grey. And then we're going to change this colour again to a light grey. Now a light grey is 25% uh, mix. And so I'm going to take this number up to 192 now. 192 and there we go, that's a light 25% grey. OK, now that set that up. Now I shall go to mode, and as you can see, it's set up as a grayscale picture. I'll turn that into a bitmap. And the resolution is 100 pixels per inch. And we shall use diffusion dither. Yeah, there's no logic to it, but obviously there must be a mathematical calculation that's taking place somewhere in the background. Now we hope that these black dots are going to come out as individual dots. So I shall save this as a file. And we'll open up this in RD Works. And we will copy it. Now each one of these is going to be a scan because it's a bitmap. And we'll make that one black. And then we'll make that one, put that one onto a blue layer. We'll put that one onto a red layer and put that one onto a green layer so that we can choose different settings. So the black layer we're going to run that at slow speed low power and then the one beside it we're going to run that at slow speed 50 millimeters a second 
and relatively high power, say 50%. Direct output. Now, we must make sure that the interval is correct for the resolution picture that we're using. So here I am sitting with my calculator. We have a resolution of 100 pixels per inch that we need to divide by 25.4. That gives me 3.937. One divided by 3.937 equals 0.254.254 millimeters. Need to set that on the first layer as well. Now we'll set the red layer up and we shall do this the opposite way round. We shall go as fast as we can, let's just say 400 millimeters a second. Power, we'll try that 50. 400 millimeters a second and a power of say 15. So then we've got four extremes that we're going to play with. I shall now save that to a file and we'll go out and burn it on the machine. Okay, we've now got our program loaded. So I'm going to turn the air assist off so that I don't smother the surface with, uh, with fumes. And I'm going to turn the extraction on so that the fumes get sucked away. all the test is. Now we're doing this test on my little China Blue machine here. While I'm out in the workshop I'll turn the job round and we'll take it over to the light blade machine and see what results we can get off the light blade machine. Okay let's see what the light blade makes of it. Let's go and look at the results. Okay, now let's take a look at these results. This is from the China Blue Machine. And what we're seeing at the top here is what you can recognize, one dot, two dots, three dots. Now, it might not look like that when we look at the first dot. It looks as though almost it's a two dot. But trust me, that is definitely one single dot. Now, this is a view looking down into the grooves. This is 50 millimeters a second and 50% power. In other words, quite a lot of power. So they're quite deep cuts. So let's have a look at the row below where we should have some definite single separated dots. They're not there. We've got lumps, but not separated dots. And then we go to the bottom row where they're definitely all supposed to be single dots. Well, we've got single dots and spaces. So what do we make of this? Well, let's have a little bit of a different look at this picture. Now I've now turned the sheet over and what I'm going to do is gradually rotate the sheet so that it's tipped up at 45 degrees and you're looking obliquely into the sheet now. And look, all of a sudden, we've got a slightly different picture. We can see the depth of the dots. Now we have this oblique view through the acrylic. Now here we're seeing the first four pixel groups. They might appear to be the first four pixel groups because they run one, two, three, four. But in reality, the beam is coming from the left hand side of the picture towards four, three, two, one. Question Does that last pixel, pixel, the single pixel, look any different height penetration into the material than the others? It, it, it may well be. 80% of the peaks that you can see on some of the other groups. Anybody that's seen the Ultimate Air Assist videos will probably understand what I'm talking about when I talk about comet tails. As the beam moves forward, it leaves a groove behind it. And as the material starts evaporating or burning, you get a gaseous jet that comes out behind the beam. Now, in the case of acrylic, that gaseous jet is actually condensate. And so what you're seeing there is like a condensate trail coming out the left hand end, which is the back of the cut, because the cut is traveling from left to right. So you must ignore that debris that's on the surface there. 
The first shape that we see on the left hand side gives the impression that there is a delay in the beam propagating because it almost looks like the first pixel is about 50% of the height of pixels number two, three and four. We can see a hint of that on the three pixel group, a little bit of a hint of that on the two pixel group and the one pixel group maybe could be 80% as tall as the highest pixels that we can see. So there is sort of confirmation that we've got that there is a propagation delay but it is a very small propagation delay. Let's just take a little bit further along for more evidence and there's really not a lot of evidence to say that that's happening. This is exactly the same test on the light blade machine. If anything the power might be slightly less on this machine because I've kept the setting the same but the, the China Blue machine is 70 watts and the light blade machine is only 60 watts and this might not be as sharp in inverted commas a lens as I have with the one and a half inch lens on the China Blue machine so I would possibly have expected some rounder shapes in reality what we've got we've got some crisper shapes and they're deeper and they're more uniform if we look at number one it is virtually the same as number two three and four now again what you've got to look at is the direction of the beam the beam is coming in from the right this time because you can see that little trail of debris on the right hand side of the cut with both these tests we have no interference caused by running at low power when you run at low power you have this high frequency impact engraving where you get an oscillating frequency which could interfere with these dots we're running at 50 percent which means both beams are nice and stable so we're looking at a stable beam here I can't see any serious evidence here for beam propagation delay well I think I'm getting much better results crisper cleaner results off of the light blade machine now that may well be because it's got a better quality power supply now it's difficult to compare heights when you've got them on different rows but if you look at the first dot on the left top row and compare that to the rest of its colleagues on the top row you'll see that there isn't a significant difference in height now compare that single dot to those along the bottom row which is a much easier thing that you can do and in fact if anything I would say some of those dots single dots on that bottom row could be even taller than the single dot on the top row I don't think we're seeing any serious propagation delay on this machine now as we mentioned in the previous session theoretically with a one and a half inch focal length lens and a spot size of 0 0.075 millimeters or three thousandths of an inch technically I should be able to get about 300 dots or 300 pixels per inch and they should look like this just touching each other now the resolution of this picture is a hundred dots per inch or a hundred pixels per inch I've made them match if we take a look along that bottom row we can see very nice little pyramids pairs of pyramids but of course each one of those pairs should have a gap between them they seem to be touching well what's actually touching I believe is a scoured surface around the top of the hole I think what happens is as the beam goes in and melts the acrylic or vaporizes the acrylic there is a jet of hot gas which comes out and scours away if you like the edge of the hole and that's what those little black areas are around the bottom of each one of those peaks so I think that's what's causing them to technically overlap and when we look at them from the other side they would look like a single line whereas in fact when we look at them from this side we can clearly see that there's two distinct pixels there so what happens when we go up to 300 pixels per inch I wonder right several interesting things about this picture first of all 
I can clearly see that it's done on the China Blue machine because of the soft round peaks on each dot. Now I say each dot because you can't really see anything except the single dots. Everything else is sort of merged into each other. The top row and the bottom row the beam is running right to left and the centre row the beam is running left to right. So what can we see here? I think we can clearly see propagation delay because looking from the left top row there we can see that one dot is very shallow, two dots is a bit deeper, three dots not much change, four dots is more or less up to speed and then you can see the same build up on the second row as well. But the thing that's less obvious is a decay delay on each one of those groups as well. How do I interpret that? Well, let's start on the top row. One, two, three, four. The fourth group along is four pixels wide. Every one of those groups I left a four pixel gap between them. But that gap doesn't exist. It's been filled up because not only have we got a propagation delay, the beam is not dropping off sharply. What we've got, we've got a decay delay as well, which is joining the groups up. That's undoubtedly caused by the fact that we are no longer running at 100 pixels per inch, but the fact that we're running at 300 pixels per inch, which means we have one third less time for the beam to propagate or decay. Now this may well have radi radical implications for choosing the best resolution for the picture. Now before we jump to any conclusions, let's take a look at the results from the light blade machine. Okay, now stand back and be amazed. Staggering difference, hey? Now let me point out to you that because the light blade has its zero zero in the opposite corner, the direction of beam travel is the opposite way round on this picture. So the top and the bottom row are traveling left to right and the middle row is traveling right to left. Well, I think we can see that we've really got almost good separation between these groups on the top line. But if I interpret this correctly, if we look at the left hand side of each one of those groups on the top line, you'll see that they are very nearly vertical. Whereas the trailing edge is a curve that's gently decaying. So we have decay delay but we have very little propagation delay in those groups. OK, so what conclusion do I draw from this second session? Well, in conjunction with the first session, I think this does verify that we have got propagation delay. But something that I didn't anticipate seeing was that we have decay delay as well. Well, there are stark differences in performance between these two machines. 60 watt tube, 70 watt tube. Now I can't say that there's any major variation in response time for the physics inside these sealed tubes. Gases are gases and the laws of physics are the things that are controlling the response times of anything that's taking place inside those tubes. So the only variable that's left really is the design and performance of the power supply. Now I've been quite thorough in showing you exactly how I generated these test patterns. And the reason I've done that is because you can now go away and see whether or not your power supply is as good as one of my power supplies or whether it's equally as bad as the other power supply that I've got. Well I hope today's session has been an eye opener. It certainly has for me. As with all my sessions, it's a journey of discovery. This is not something I discovered two, three, four weeks ago. Today, that's the first time I've seen this and I'm having to put my own interpretation on it. So I'm going to love you and leave you again. You can ponder on these pictures for yourself, but hopefully it might stimulate some thoughts about how you can get the best performance from your machine. Maybe your machine is just limited by your power supply. I'll see you in the next session. Goodbye for now.